Yo, what's up guys? It's the Insane Game Freak here, here to bring you Dora Season 2, Part 2, Episode 11, Review, I believe. Uh, which, this is pretty much the, this, this is the second to last episode. I don't, I think there's only 12 episodes, because most of the new season stuff starts on the 2nd. Well, next week is the 26th, and then the next week after that is April 2nd. So my logic is stating that this is the last episode because, see, I mean, granted, I know the 13 episode bugs sometimes throw over certain series, but I, I think Dora, this is it. Like, I think that we got one more episode and then I think we're done. And this episode had a lot of shit in it. Primarily, mostly, mostly Mikado and Masaomi conversation with a little bit of extra stuff. Um, I can already tell the way this episode is going and the way next week is probably going to go. We're pro I would probably say that for those who are looking for answers for every single thing, um, you're probably not going to get it. I I'm, I'm almost certain you're not going to get it. Uh, also, because there's an existence of Dura SH, which is a sequel series, which features, I think, three new main characters, but still in the same city of Ikirubukuro, like, and it still features some of the whole cast, like, it's just a series focused around three new characters, pretty much taking the original Dora story, continuing it. And I think I think SH takes place like what is it a year or a few months after the original Dora, so you'll still see Mikado and Andre and all that other shit. They're just not the focus anymore. It's like a it's like a whole new bag of bullshit with just in the same city in the same town with probably just new characters and new problems. Um, but to give, so, for those wondering, you're probably not gonna get that complete ending you're looking for. You'll get a general ending that'll cover most shit, just not the little things. Like, I don't think any of the Ruri backstory stuff with Kudri is gonna really be explained. Um, I'm not even totally sure the Zaya Chisua thing will finally come to a head. I feel like it is, but I'm not sure. I do know the ending for Mikado, Masaomi, and Anri, but that's about it. I mean, really, I don't even know the more ending from us only. I know the general ending from Mikado and Anri, which I'm not going to explain because this episode leaves on a cliffhanger and I don't want to spoil whether that cliffhanger is true or not. But, getting into the, uh, although I think I may have already inadvertently. That's besides the point. If you were smart to catch it, don't worry about it. Um, so the conversation, which really just kind of continues to outline what the problem is, Mikado. Mikado's like a, it's like a, it's like a disturbed nice guy, and it's it's very weird because even at his core, he's still a nice guy. Like you know, it's it's like when we hear the gunshot go off in the episode, it's like oh he he missed and only and scratched Masaomi's face because he's still trying to half-heartedly shoot, and then you see him get shot in the knee, and what that really is is him. It's not that I mean pretty much from what I understood it, the way he explained the weapon that was on his hand. That weapon is literally just a easy way of firing shit where all he has to do is pull, he just lift his arm in the general direction. And I think, you know, it'll go off. I forget what it is, but as long it's, it's a mechanism to make shooting easier, meaning that he's not even, he, he didn't even come to that damn rooftop prepared to kill my son. It was something in his mind. It was, I feel like a lot of the shit he's doing at this point is kind of on the fly. Um, because he's still a nice guy. He, he, and especially towards the end of the episode, you can easily see that his... Because we finally get to figure out what Mikado's plan is for the dollars. Originally, he was the, his whole plan up until, like, recently was to purge the dollars. And it seemed like as soon as he got the gun from Izumi... And I don't think Izumi thought... Izumi thought he would, like, the whole plan... Because now we also get to see the, um... The other Akasawa group member, the one that seemed to be doing shit on, behind the scenes with Izumi... We kind of get to see what his plan was. His plan was to give Mikado the gun and get him to do something really reckless, which would justify taking him out. But a Akabayashi also brings up that, oh yeah, you're probably going to replace him with someone else that's easier to manipulate. Because because Mikado, as nice as he is, is still a wild card. The dude still does things that throws everybody off. I don't think anybody up until this point has been able to accurately predict how Mikado reacts to things. Because he's all over the fucking place. Um, and it's, it's just partially due to the, the fact that he's a nice guy. Who has the obsession of dealing with the things of dealing with the unknown? Like that seems to be the core of his personality. He's obsessed with the unknown, and he likes the unpredictability of it all, which is why he keeps the chain. I don't think he, when he came out there to meet Masami on the roof. I don't think his whole he wasn't prepared to really shoot him. That's it's it's all for unpredictable reactions. 
It makes him the most dangerous of characters because you can't tell what the fuck he's about to do, which is when we find out in the episode, oh, he pretty much graffiti and disgraced the Akasawa group wall of, like, the main boss member, essentially kind of playing, playing, pretty much putting them all on high alert, which just gave the dude enough ammo to be like, alright, now we can go get him and fuck him up and kill him, probably, so we can replace him with a puppet of someone easier to deal with, and Akabashi is like, you need to let me handle this. And the reason why, and it's already kind of obvious why he wants to handle it. Because he wants to do it in a way to save Mikado before he really does something stupid. And it's mainly for Anri's benefit. It's not like he owes Mikado anything specifically. I think it really is just that he knows how Anri would feel. He doesn't want Anri to feel, but he, he doesn't want Anri to go through that type of shit. So she ra he rather do do one of her friends a favor so she would keep because that's what it is. Like I want you to keep smiling, so I don't want I don't want to see your friends go to jail. And plus, up until this point, he still hasn't. He's getting really fucking close, but he hasn't really done anything irredeemable yet. Irredeemable is killing Masaomi. At that point, is you you've lost. And the worst he's done at this point is you shoot him in the knee, which is I don't I think Masaomi has no problem like shrugging off in the grand scheme of things as if he doesn't die. Um, because at the end of the episode, you see he's he's trying to commit suicide. He goes from resetting the dollars because, and I get, and the plan was actually pretty clever. You start some shit with the group, so anybody who's anybody already knows who the Akasawa group is. You will stop calling yourself a dollar if you know that the group is running around trying to kill dollars. We're gonna, we're gonna put the, we're gonna put the brakes to the dollars, and that's the way you get rid of the dollars with the fear of a fucking group running around trying to kill, which isn't a bad plan because there aren't many people gonna keep doing this shit, and only the dumb ones will. And that's someone, and you have to ask me a special type of stupid. You got to be willing to take down an entire organization. Although I can't tell if Mikado had the intention of dying beforehand, though, and I don't think he did. I think he just planned. He knew that it was gonna get worse and worse from this point forward. He knew that the dollars would become a legend. But he would still be hunted and be, and so they were tr still trying to kill him. So he had to be prepared to do some disturbing things, which is why he, tried, he came up there with a half-hearted attempt to fucking kill Masaomi. Because he feels like that's the direction he's going down, which by the end of their fight, it's just like, well, I've gone so far. You know what? I think, I think this won't get any better and I won't be able to help. And he's just like, well, I want to at least fix the city for all the trouble I caused. And then he goes into full-on, like, depression and tries to kill himself. I say try because we don't know if he succeeded. Usually when they off-screen a bang off-screen, and it's not like the last episode, my assumption is he probably isn't going to die. Because you don't off-screen a death. A death is like a is like one of the best ways to end an episode. So the fact that they're off-screening it almost implies that he's fine. Also because Dura hasn't killed a major character. Like, none of the major characters have died, so it also, it wouldn't really fit the show to have him commit suicide. Although it does bring up the question, what will stop him? Now, I already know what probably will stop him, but you guys don't. Um, then we got the other stuff with pretty much everything coming to a head, where he's, where Mikado's also re-enlisted the help of these biker dudes, who were the problem in the first place, ironically enough, for the, the dollars. To have them essentially come and follow Aoba's lead, which, uh, that's the other character I don't think is gonna be fully explored by an episode. I feel like he's just gonna kind of just float off into the distance in the background. Because, let's be honest here, they haven't really spent any time on Aoba, so I already know that any of his development will either be rushed or forced. There's like really subtle stuff with him and the, the Odahata twins, but that's about it. Uh, we're, I'm guessing we're gonna see the conclusion between Zaya and Shizuo, which I find kind of interesting that their first, that their interaction is like, the, like where they leave in this episode is like almost the same place we first were introduced to them fighting in the anime. Now granted, this isn't the first time they fought. It'd be really interesting if they went all the way back to the middle school they were at when they first met, and then they fought. You know, we can have that. So for Dura fans, you'd be able to tell it's almost in the same damn intersection that we first saw them fighting back in season one. Um, and they've kind of fully fleshed out, there's more to Isaiah and Shizuo's relationship as of right now, but I probably won't talk about that until the final episode to see if they touch upon anything else. Uh, and then also the other, only other inter eh, can't talk, interesting bit is the Shinra and Kudri conversation, 
where we learn that that indeed Kudri was in love with Shinra because of his in love with Selty and it made him more appealing but because she was never experienced in love and never got to experiencing those things because of her upbringing she she never thought she could be loved she, and the fact that she owns Saika you know that also kind of takes away from the situation but I feel like he she fell in love with him and half of the reason why she did what she did to Selty was partially because of job related. And I think the other half was jealousy, which she already openly admitted to the second half. And the first half was pretty obvious too. But it's like, but the problem, the only problem I have with this interaction is that it's literally answering a question that no one really wanted an answer to in the first place. Like when we saw, like when we saw Kudri, Kudri kidnap Shinra, we all knew it was probably for the job because we had already heard beforehand that it was that it was supposed that he was supposed that she's supposed to deliver salty to the guy. So it's like I didn't really like I don't think anyone really gave a damn if you were in love with Shinra because these characters have barely interacted. Like this is like the first or second or maybe third time they've interacted in the entire series. I think it is, it's probably only the second time actually. The first time being when she kissed him. That was it. That's like their only interaction. So how in hell did you and granted I know how you fell in love with him. Because you probably met him when he was younger, but there was no flashbacks, there's no setup for Kudri. And that's actually probably the biggest problem with Dora Season 2 right now, in general, is the fact that it introduces a lot of characters that don't even get fully fleshed out stories. Same thing with Ruri. Ruri is just kind of introduced in the beginning of Season 2, and then like completely dropped by the end of it. So I'm like, well, what the fuck was the... Why did you even introduce her? By the time you got to put shit that was relevant, she was gone. And we still don't even really know her interactions with Kudri. Because all her shit was like, there's a lot of in-between shit that feels completely dropped. So I'm already, I already know that this won't be a satisfying ending as an overall thing. It'll be satisfying enough for certain characters. That'll be about it. I mean, granted, Rui's situation right now is fine. I mean, she's with Shu, she's with Shuhei. Is it Shuhei or Yuhei? I think it's Yuhei. She's the world's younger brother. That's the point I'm trying to make. Um, and they'll probably end up just hanging around the Orohata twins. The only interesting end that I'm looking forward to seeing is really Shizuo and his eyes, because I'm curious to see how that's going to go. And also, I'm pretty sure Salty and Shinra are going to be fine, which means I can only imagine the episode really primarily being, and then we still got to deal with all this fucking psycho shit. That also means that the way this ends is going to be pretty simple. Um, because we still got to get, we still got to do something with Takashi, which somebody's got to handle. Somebody's got to handle in some way, um, or Takashi because Takashi was already freaking out when he saw uh, she's boy. He was like, "Oh God!" And now you can kind of see what he was gonna do. He was gonna use Tom. He was gonna use Tom as kind of a bargaining chip to stop she's boy and they take control of she's boy and all this other shit. Um, although I'm trying to figure out how Takashi got his involved with Kudri because Kudri knows who Erica's talking about when he explains who it is. But I'm like, how do you know about? Takashi anyway. The only characters, like Takashi, that's the, this is the one thing I don't get. Takashi is way more involved with characters than I don't get why he's involved with. Like, how do you know Kodaka? How do you know Shizuo for that matter? You and Shizuo, I don't even think you've ever interacted. The only characters you should know is Haruna, fucking Anri, and maybe Anri's friends by association. You've never even met Mikado or Masaomi, so I don't even get that. So the fact that Kudri is aware of Takashi confuses me on a completely different level. Also, uh, um, first actual confirmation that the guy is indeed Takashi. But it still brings, like, I'm still confused about his association. Like, I see what he's doing, but he really doesn't have the, but I don't understand his motivations. And maybe that's just me, maybe I missed something, but someone can let me know in the comments. Um, this is, it's, it's so fucking cluttered right now. That this can only be a, which prior explains why there's a sequel series, which may or may not even go into the explanations for why certain these certain characters. Because really, as of right now, the only endings I'm expecting to definitely see is Selty and Shinra's, Masaomi's, Mikado's, and Anri's. Kodaka and them will probably be fine. I'm not expecting that to turn into any type of shit. And that, and maybe Shizuo and Isaiah. That's about it. At the words, I feel like everyone else is up in the air. Rui and Yuhei are fine, and Aoba's fine, but, uh, yeah.
I'm losing your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. This being this in game freak. I have a game, play to win, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.